Mondays are in listen-only mode. Hi, good morning everyone. This is Travis McGrath from Exago. I'm going to be leading today's support lab. Uh, seeing as a few people are signing in, we're going to be starting at 11.02. Uh, if you do have any questions or you are experiencing any audio or visual issues, please use the questions box in the right hand of the GoToWebinar panel to let us know. Make sure you can hear me. Uh, that would be great. And we'll talk to you in just a moment. Great. As the last few people are signing in here, let me just begin by making sure everyone can see my screen. You should be looking at a PowerPoint slide here that says Support Lab Multi-Tenancy, and uh, you should be able to hear me. And if so, if you could just take a moment in the questions box in the GoToWebinar panel to type a Y or a Yes, uh, that lets us know that everything's coming through loud and clear. Perfect. Lots of responses. Um, so while you're there, that is the place. Uh, all Everyone attending here is on mute. But if at any point you have any questions, my colleague Emma will be monitoring those questions. Uh, so feel free to type anything in there. If you miss something, if you want a little more detail, uh, happy to do that. And what we'll do now is just start by mentioning a few things. First, welcome. The, these labs are supposed to be a great in-depth dive into a particular topic of Exago. Uh, and this lab particularly is about multi-tenancy and data. We're going to be building off of the topic that Emma, my colleague, went over with our lab earlier in the month on roles and how to control access to data objects in, in Exago. Uh, but this is going to be a little more technical and a little bit heavier in code. Um, so we'll try to go slowly and keep the examples pretty light. But there will be some uh, C-sharp code being thrown around. Hope that doesn't worry anyone too much. It's pretty simple stuff. The other thing to mention here is, of course, these support labs, like all our support labs, are recorded. So they'll be available to you on our support site. So you can go back, review this one, or if you want to see Emma's, uh, Emma's presentation on roles as a background to this, you can certainly do that as well. Great. Just a real quick look. Don't seem to be any initial questions, so we'll jump right into it. Uh, so first of all, what is multi-tenancy and why, you know, what situations do I care about this? 
So the question of multi-tenancy really has to do with how is your data being kept per client, company, user, you know, what have you. And there are four ways that we see clients keeping different types of data for or different users' data separate from each other so that each user is only seeing the appropriate data. And that's really our goal here with our multi-tenant features. So the first way we see this working is that you have different clients, different companies, different users, and they have completely different data structures. Those could be different databases, uh, different tables, views, MDX queries, stored procs, all the different types of data that Exago allows you to provide to your users. But you may have a similar structure for data, but you're keeping different users' data on different databases, right? So each user has their own database, uh, but the structure of that database is going to be the same across different users. The third scenario you might run into is that you have a bunch of users sharing the same database, but each data object, each table or view, has some column or number of columns that indicate which user can access which rows of a particular data object. And then the last example, maybe, maybe you're doing something a little more complex than just having a specific set of columns. Maybe you want to do some complex filtering to do row level security based on who the what company they're coming from, or you know, any other business logic built in. So these are the four scenarios we're going to walk through today. Uh, and with that, I'm actually going to move away from our slide presentation here and jump over to our admin console. And so our first scenario is that we have two users with completely different data structures. And what we saw last in our last uh, support lab was that different users may have different databases. And in this case, we're going to focus on two databases that are inside of this specific configuration as an example. And what we notice is that uh, we have our Northwind database. This is a sample data set from Microsoft as well as a database we've labeled here Salesforce that is replicated out of that application, right? So we have these two databases and we have all the objects from both these databases. So we've got um, some of these objects like customers and uh, demographics and categories and products coming from the Northwind database. And then we have some of these objects coming from the Salesforce database. But it's a little clustered here and, you know, it could be a little tough to tell them apart. The other thing I'll notice here is that, or sort of one way that we could handle this, is like Emma mentioned before, is we could create a role, and that role can partition which data objects are included or excluded. So we can set, you know, a role to say, well, this is a Salesforce user, so they get access to all the Salesforce data objects versus this is a Northwind user, they get access to all the Northwind data objects. So we could create different roles here and activate those per user. However, if we know that users aren't going to overlap, they're not going to have access to both, what we can do is all the admin console is really doing is it's building an XML configuration file. So instead of having one config with both these data objects and then having to do a bunch of work in roles to partition which objects belong to which user, we can simply replicate this uh, configuration so that we have one object that has the Northwind uh, data in it and one object that has the Salesforce configuration in it. And then when Exago actually launches, so when we come in through the host application, we can tell Exago in the code which configuration file to use. And to show you how that works, what I'm going to do is jump over to a little demo application we've put together here. This is a, a fictitious company, but you can think of this as your host application. And I'm going to log in first as one user. And this user, uh, we're going to call them user1, is only able to access data from Northwind. So when we launch the full Exago UI here, I should mention, by the way, this uh, is going to be using our newest release, which just came out yesterday, our 17.1 version. So the UI may look a little uh, more modern for you there. 
But when I come into our designer, I'll notice that I only have access to the Northwind data. And I might say, well, how do we do that? So we've got the code sample that launched Exago here. And what we'll notice is right as we initialize a session with Exago, the host application in the API is specifying which of those two configuration files we want to use to load up this session. So in this case, we have the user, user1, who only has access to the Northwind. We've specified that they should only get the configuration file that has the Northwind data. And to show you that in a little more detail, what I can do is I'll bring up the actual code behind, and I'll zoom in just a little bit here so it's nice and large for everyone. Oops. So what we can do, this is our method within our host application that gets a new API object. And again, what we'll see is that right as we initialize Exago, we pull the application path but also based on who the user is, which configuration file to load. So that will cover our first scenario, right? If we have completely different users, we can simply have different config files, and then we can partition users by which config file we load for them. They're only gonna be able to see that appropriate data. I wanna pause there and just check, are there any questions? Okay, great, I don't see any questions coming in. So the next question, or the next scenario we've talked about is what happens if you have the same database structure, but you wanna change the database dynamically? So again, in our configuration file here, we know that, or in our admin console, we know that for a database, we can specify a connection string, right? And so this will let us say, you know, connect to server equal dot, 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 right? Uh, so we can specify a connection string, but what if you wanted to change that connection string per user? So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to log out, uh, and I'm going to log in as a third user. So this user has access to that Northwind data, but is going to do uh, something a little special here. Uh, so as the API is launching Exago, it's going to specify what connection string to use. Apologies, we'll get back to that debugger statement in just a moment. But showing the sample code here, we're going to run through the same sample where we load that Northwind configuration file. But the API before it launches can do more than just load different config files. It can change session specific values. Commonly, we do that to keep track of, you know, things like the user ID or the company ID or what language Exago should be displayed in. But in this case, we can actually go in and look at what data sources are available, find a data source that we want, and change properties about it for that specific um, session. So here, if I go to, say, server uh, or the connection string, I can change, you know, where the server is, what the database is, maybe who the login is. So I have full control over what that connection string is based on which user is entering Exago. So that's our second scenario. We have, you know, multiple databases with the same structure. We just keep one simple config file, and then we change the database connection string as the user signs in through the API. The third option here is that we have multiple users on the same database. And the question is, well, how can we set the uh, security so that we always only show the appropriate data? And what we're going to do in our admin console here is go to a data object. So in this case, let's say employees. And in the data objects, we have a number of different properties, things like aliases, things like descriptions. Uh, but what we're going to focus on here is the multi-tenant columns. Uh, so, or the tenant columns. And what this lets us do is it lets us look at what parameters are available. These are just placeholders for values that we're going to be setting dynamically through the API. But it lets us match up those uh, placeholders and later on those actual values to specific columns. So I could do something like this where I say I want my employee ID to match the user ID. Uh, 
And if I did this, any time Exago makes a query to the database, if they run a report, if they use a drop-down filter, you know, any time this object is used, it will automatically add some filtering criteria so that this employee ID has to match the value of this parameter. And then, of course, as we saw here, we can set that parameter through the API. Now, I should mention, of course, I'm doing all of these examples in our .NET API and using C Sharp. But, of course, these are also uh, possible using our REST API for web services. The other thing that's important here is that this tenant column need not be one single column. If you wanted to match up multiple columns here, you could certainly do that as well. So you can have as many columns specifying tenancy as you'd like. So that brings us through our first three scenarios on multi-tenancy. I just want to take a quick pause and again check if there are any questions. Okay, great. The last one, and this is sort of my favorite here, is what if you wanted to do something more complex? Like, for example, you want to match up employee ID, but you don't want it to be a simple equals. Maybe you want it to do something more sophisticated, like have it um, be dynamic, maybe provide a list of values, you know, something other than just a simple tenancy. Well, in our roles, we have a property called, if I look down at the bottom, called role filters, and these allow you to specify a data object and then set a string that Exago will take, you know, in full and pass into that filter criteria for any database query using that object. Um, so now, again, we can set these here in the roles of the UI, but what I want to do is actually show you how this works uh, in our demo application. So I'm going to do two things. One is I'm going to sign off here, but first we're going to walk through a little bit of code. So as Exago is launched by the host application, and we're going to walk through how we've done it in our demo app, but this is really analogous to how all of our clients do this. Uh, it initializes a session with the API, and then it makes sure to get the permissions that the user has access to. So this is a method I'm not going to go into, but all I'm going to say is that it returns a data set of what permissions are specific for that user because the host application already knows that. But then what it's going to do is it's going to modify the API. And specifically, what we're going to focus on here is this helper method we've written that builds a role for us dynamically. So we're not using a role that's already created in the admin console, though we certainly could. What we're going to do is build a new role on the fly. So what we're doing is we're building a new role object and then on that object we can set various permissions. So here we have some permissions around folders, uh, but what I care about today focusing on multi-tenancy is around data objects. So the first thing we're going to do is decide whether or not this user has access to see all the data objects. And then assuming they don't have access, we can set individual objects specific permissions. So we're going to loop through the list of objects that have come from our host application. And we're going to create data objects here and set them as part of the role. So what we do here is on the role, we do security, data objects, make a new data object, and match them up by name. Now, in addition to the data object, we can set those row level filters I mentioned before. And you'll notice here I have a, a debugger launch statement. So in a moment, we can see this, we can go in and debug and look at the actual value being set that's coming from our host application, and in this case from a database, of course. Uh, but what we're doing with that value is we are building a data object row and again setting this as part of our security in our role and specifying what that filter string should be. So to show you the real values happening here, I'm going to log back in as user 3. And I'm going to hit that debug statement that I mentioned before 
I'm just going to launch my debugger here. So this is going to show us the actual value of the code. So here we are, we're inside setting that role. We're building this role up dynamically. And what we can do is we can look at what the data object is. So in this case, we're looking at the object employees. And we can set this string. And in this case, the string, it may appear a little small on your screen, but it's just a simple SQL statement that says employees.employeeID equals four. And this is gonna mean that for any query that this user does, if it involves the employee object, they're only going to get to see data for employee four. Right, and this is being set here. So if we stop debugging, we can go back to our host application. And I'm going to build an express view. This is our easiest way of quickly building a report. And I'm just going to build a report that shows, of course, the employee ID, because that's what we want to see. Uh, the first name, last name, and then maybe the details, so look at some of the orders they've made, their order ID, the date, and maybe the revenue, right? Uh, and what I can do is simply hit live data, and this is going to go get the real data for us. And what you'll notice is that it's only going to show me that one user's information because behind the scenes it's already added the filter. I haven't built any additional filters. I started this express view totally from scratch, but that multi-tenant protection behind the scenes has already been applied. So again, I just want to pause there and see if there are any questions. Great. So this lab has been pretty simple. Uh, but we looked at four scenarios for how your data is structured and how using Exago we can uh, make sure that only specific users are seeing the, you know, the data that you want them to see, whether that be from different data sets entirely, uh, similarly structured databases, databases that use multi-tenant columns, or require more sophisticated row-level filters. Hey, Travis, if I can jump in here. Um, we got a last minute question asking for you to please repeat the second scenario. So if you could walk through that for us real quick, that would be great. Yeah, absolutely. So what we would do here is you have the same database, but you want to change the connection string based on who the user is. So for example, here I have a, a data source, you know, I can build a new data source and I can set its connection string by default, but you have different users with different connection strings and you want them of course to go to their own appropriate database. So as Exago launches, it, you initialize the API uh, and in that API object you can specify, you can inspect what data sources are available, you can get those data sources, so here I can get the data source we're calling Northwind, and then I can change its connection string to match up with whatever is appropriate for that specific user, whether that be pointing to a different server, a different database, or, you know, logging in with different criteria. Perfect. Um, so the other thing I wanted to offer, uh, yep, uh, sorry, there's one more question just came up. Ah, the question is, could I assign multiple roles to uh, a single user? Uh, so the answer there is no. Uh, we don't allow multiple roles to be activated at one time. So if you activate one role, it's going to deactivate the others. However, because we can build these roles dynamically, so the roles are created here in the host application, you can you don't need to activate different roles. You could create one role and sort of merge together all the properties you're looking for. Um, so here, for example, we're building the role from scratch. Uh, and then we can handle specifically based on whatever permissions the host application would like to specify which data objects should be available and what filter strings those data objects may or may not have. 
Uh, okay, so a question came in to sort of recap the third scenario. And so that scenario was that if you have uh, multiple users in, in the same database, but the way the data objects have been defined, uh, a column or series of columns determines access to that value. Uh, who can access that value? So for example, if you uh, only wanted a specific user to see uh, data where, um, say in employees, again, you wanted them only to be able to see where employee ID was equal to a certain value, you could do that here in the admin console by specifying a column and say here we used employee ID and let's say you want to match up so only employees can see what matches up to their specific ID. That's going to make sure that they can only see their own particular values. Um, the last option here, just to go through the last one briefly, uh, was to do something more complex. So build some SQL that's added to any query using a specific object that always gets used by Exago when querying the data source. Uh, and that query can be really anything we'd like. So what we did here is we set in code uh, in the role we added to the security settings, we added what we call a data object row. And that data object row does two things. One, it specifies which data object it cares about. Uh, so which data object Exago should know to use this query for. And then it specifies a value or uh, a filter string. So that filter string uh, is SQL or, you know, the standard query language here that specifies a additional clause in the filter criteria per user and that can that entire filter string can come from the host application which means you can set it to be dynamic and as complex as needed for the specific security in your data objects so those were our four criteria here with multi tenancy Perfect. Um, so with that recap, the other thing I want to do is just mention that uh, on this week was the release of our 17.1 uh, version. Uh, and so what I want to do is give you just the quickest sneak peek of one of the many cool features that have been added to Exago here. Uh, and then give you a heads up to look out for an email that's coming with our uh, announcement for our 17.1 webinar where we'll be going through all of our features, the new behind the scenes, both technical and the upfront end user features. So what I want to do is show you some of the expansions that came on to Express Views. So what I'm going to do here is just simply build one. Uh, our Express View Builder lets us quickly uh, and really nicely lay out and design a report. Uh, and it lets us do things like simple grouping criteria as well as some basic aggregation. Now, of course, this was available in 16.3, but with our new release, you can do a couple of really neat things. So the first one is in one click, I can simply add a visualization. So I can add a chart and I have many types of charts available to me. Uh, as well as in our filtering, we now have some capabilities around top and filtering. So if I wanted to say only see the countries for uh, the top revenue, I can do that here. Uh, and then finally, we've added some formatting capabilities. Uh, this includes things like themes, so I can very easily build out a uh, theme here. Uh, and I can change the styling not only of my report, but also of the, um, of the chart and visualization as well. So here we've got uh, formatting capabilities, top end filtering, and very easy to, to create graphics as well. So you can build out visualizations very easily, and the whole thing is following our new UI uh, protocols, so everything flows extremely nicely. 
Now, I don't want to go into too much detail here because, again, we'll be having a release webinar uh, in the coming weeks. So keep an eye out for that email. And, of course, if you have any questions, please always feel free to reach out to us. So with that, I just want to say thank you for your time. I hope this answers your questions around multi-tenancy and some of the data security aspects of Exago. Uh, this recording will be available on our support site, and we'll email out that recording to you as soon as it is. Beautiful. It looks like the questions are all, all settled and uh, checked away. So we will see you next month. Thanks so much. And thanks so much, Travis. That was a, a beautiful explanation. Absolutely. Take care, everyone.